Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making a pair of 1830s stays. Alright, so here's the old corset basically. Um, there's a few fitting issues. I think the, the top needs to go up about half an inch. Um, just because it doesn't really, it sits a little low on my bust. So I'm just going to add half an inch up here and if it needs to be cut down a little bit, we'll just cut down a little bit. Um, I definitely need to um, bone, well I bone here, I need to make this bone go further down, maybe down to the waist. The gussets need to be corded of some kind because they keep falling down. And then it's of no use as a traditional corset. There is, I did take up a seam because it was about two inches too big all the way around. Um, so I'm just going to cut the one size smaller. All the measurements or all the proportions should all be the same then. Um, but hopefully I won't have to take up that big old tuck um, on either side. I'm going to do a different cording pattern this time. I'm looking kind of at an original. Other than that, we're going to do basically the same thing except, um, yeah, hand stitch it instead of machine stitch it. I'm looking at the originals. It seems like most of them are back stitched all the way around, but I found a couple examples that were running stitched um, on like all the exterior, so like the center busk. That was done by running stitch. All the cording was done by running stitch. Boning was done by running stitch. Um, and I'm thinking I'm going to go with that just because it's easier. And I can't be bothered to do all this work with a back stitch because it takes forever. And so I think the only things we're going to back stitch are the gussets because they need to be extra secure and then the side seams. So other than that, we're going to do a whole lot of um, running stitches. But um, I was using the Laughing Moon pattern. Yeah, they're Regency and Romantic Era corsets. Uh, view A is the one that we want. And so, yeah, I guess we can go ahead and get start cutting this thing. So I'm going to be working with a uh, cotton sateen today, which is my preferred fabric for corsets, actually. cut out and I'm going to start stitching it together. I think it might be easier to stitch together the um, side seams first and then worry about the gussets in a minute. So we're going to do all these seams with the back stitch just for security. And next up we have the little gussets and I'm going to um, put cording all of them in these gussets to kind of strengthen them. So I'm going to go ahead and run a stitch diagonal or put cording in diagonally. Now I have a little seam there. I'm going to get a bit of cording and just stick it in here. Push it right up against that seam. <laughs> We're going to stitch this in. Kind of pushing the cording with my fingers to make sure it goes right up against the other seam. Trying to keep my seam straight. And we're going to continue doing that all the way up and all the way down for all four gussets. I'm not going to do the um, hip gussets. Mostly because I got enough padding down there naturally and I don't need anything else there. This is less about padding the bust and more about just support. I don't need support in my hips, so we're going to just do the bust gussets. Which I'm looking at originals and a lot of them that were corded very heavily in the bust were not in the hips anyway, so it seems like it's a period solution. We're going to put in the gussets now. So here are two of the gussets, all nice and corded, all the way down. And so I'm going to pick one of these to be the front, and I think that's going to be it. And so here is the center front right here, and then there's the slits for the gussets on either side. 
And all of these I'm going to um, back stitch as well, just because I need them to be very secure. I'm not stitching all the way down, I'm going to leave about three quarters of an inch to an inch on the very bottom. And stitch, and we're going to cover that up later with um, flossing. And it won't take this much of my gusset, I'm going to do like a quarter of inch seam allowance. And I'm going to cut a few more gussets, four more gussets actually, for the um, bust. And I'm going to put plain ones that are not corded in the lining bust. And honestly, I really hate gussets. There's a reason why my 1860s corset is a shaped corset, not a gusseted corset. But when you look at the 1830s ones, the originals, you do see, I think, I don't think I've seen one that was shaped that was an 1830s corset, now that I think about it. I think all I've seen is gusseted ones. But I think we're also going to put on the um, straps. And these are also going to be stitched with a back stitch. Basically, all the interior seams that you won't see from the front of the corset are going to be um, back stitched, and all the up seams that you will see are going to be um, done with a running stitch. So all the gussets are in. Um, this is the back side of it. There's the bust gussets, and there's the front one. With the cording in it. I also stitched together the back the sides, basically at the back, the center backs. And so now I have a put together corset, it's just not, you know, finished. So I think we're ready to go ahead and sew where the boning is going to go. So I made marks with um, chalk, and I'm going to put a boning piece on each of the seams here, one at the center back, and then I'm going to add a second. Uh, I'm going to add a fourth one right here, um, right between the two hip gussets. So I think that's going to be it. Everything else is going to be corded. And I'm thinking that I'm going to use um, plastic whalebone for most of the boning, because that is very, very close to original baling, um, at least in terms of how it behaves, not in terms of looks at all. It looks nothing like baling. But um, behavioral-wise, it, it does very closely mimic baleen. And, but except for the very back, the center back, I don't like to do the baleen. I prefer to do steel in the center back. And just with all my corsets, that's just what I prefer. So I think that is what we're going to do to kind of follow that pattern. And the front is going to be um, mostly corded. There'll be a few bones, um, kind of towards the bust line, and I need to uh, mark those as well. I haven't marked those yet. Alright, so cording channels, or boning channels, in the back are all put in. Now we're working on the front a little bit. Um, I do not have my busk in yet, but I did order it, so I have its measurements, so I know it's about an inch wide, so I made it a little bit wider, because it's a you know, quarter of an inch thick bust, so I marked where I'm going to do that channel up here. And I'm starting to look at the decorative fronty front bits, um, which is going to be the fun part. So, looking at originals, I want something that's really, really fancy, just because I portray a wealthy woman of the period. So, something that's a little fancier, something that's a little, you know, just prettier in general is probably what she's going to be wearing. So, um, I found several originals I'm going to copy because I couldn't find one. Um, there's one that I'm doing pretty close. It's just the top part I'm changing up. So that's where I'm getting the ideas for how much boning is in the back is the one in the V&A museum. And then um, a lot of the decor pieces I think in the front I'm going to do. It's just she did not have any support up in the bust. And that's my one thing with the mock-up is two minutes after putting on that mock-up, even with, I put steel bones in that thing up the front, even though I the originals don't show that and it still just flops right over my bust within two minutes and that's not and the entire point of a course is it to, is to support the bust so that's not going to work so I did add in of course the corded, corded gussets which are going to be helpful in that but I also just want more support the original in the V&A does have a piece of boning that's coming across here it's ending right under it's actually further down the waist in hers, but because my guess, my bust gussets are longer, because I have a larger bust, and also they're not as high, so I think this is a slightly earlier corset, their bust was higher, 
um, mine's going to end about where hers does on the waist, but closer to the gussets. So I'm not going to do all the fancy stuff that she has all in this area because there just isn't the space between the gusset and my waist, basically. So, um, but I am going to add that boning here. I'm going to add another boning between this bust line all the way up to this point. And, of course, there'll be the busk in here. So that's going to be hopefully enough support with the cording and two bones in either side of the, of the gussets. Um, this line is going to be the fancy embroidery bit, so I'm going to do embroidery across all of this, um, these gussets, and I'm going to do the embroidery in little channels um, across here. So this little line is going to be my first one, because it ends where this boning ends. I'm just going to start by doing two, well, maybe just one row of cording, and then half an inch space for embroidery, and then another row of cording, and then this piece of boning is going to go up to that point. This one's going to go all the way down, and there's going to be another piece of embroidery kind of coming across, kind of curving this way, but we're not getting to that point yet. What I am going to do, and I'm not going to do it on camera just because I don't want this video to be a million hours long. So I'm going to stitch up the front bust, which y'all see me make a straight stitch before, a running stitch. That's nothing new. I'm probably going to do all this stay stitching just to give myself a place to hold things. Um, it's not necessarily anything like I'm inserting inserting anything at this point. It's just going to be a lot of stay stitching so I can get all these pins out. And then I will come back on video to show um, the embroidery part for sure. And then we can start making bony or cording channels all across the front of the, of the bodice. Alright, it's coming along. So this side of the front is done. I'm almost done with this side and then we can start working on the back. So I'm just been making tiny little cording channels. So there's going to be embroidery here. And of course on this side as well. There's a piece of boning just like the original going this way. And I made some not quite all together um, cording channels just along here. But then up above the border this was entirely filled in. Now the original had it filled in like straight. I ended up just following this line because I found it easier. Um, I found it easier to follow the line of the embroidery. So I'm just kind of going this way with it. And I don't think we're going to do anything else up in this direction except for the embroidery, which I think I'm going to need to do a feather stitch as opposed to the herringbone that you see in the original. Um, I am kind of concerned about turning this corner with a herring with a herringbone stitch um, that the original shows. So I think it'll be easier to do it with a feather stitch. And I'm just, at this point, I'm not necessarily measuring how far everything is going. Um, at least as far as it's cording channels, I'm kind of just guesstimating. It looks like it'll fit cording and I'm just sewing it where I think it should go. Oh yeah, and I have a blue hands this week. Because um, it's something I did yesterday and you will find out more about that next week in the video that will be published. So yeah, look forward to that. But it doesn't seem to be leaching onto the fabric at all, so I think we'll be okay. Alright, so front is completely done. Which is nice. I think before I put cording in here, I'm going to soak it for a while to get all this little blue marks off of it. Um, probably going to be easier to do that before I put the cording in, because the cording may shrink when it dries. And so I'd rather uh, do that afterwards. But, um, yeah, so I was looking at the original, and it looks like this embroidery bit gets continued um, to this last section where the piece joins and this piece doesn't have any of that at all. So I'm going to continue that line here. I am going to make another, because I'm looking closer at the, gen uh, the original, there's one more uh, boning channel. So there's the channel for the cording and there's a space where you put the grommets and there's another set of um, cording and, or boning, there's boning there. And so I'm going to do that, and then it looks like the rest of this piece, at least up until this point where the embroidery ends, is completely filled in at an angle, which I kind of like it, the idea of going it this way, and then having the back meet up that way. I think that would look really nice, and I don't know if I want that to go all the way down, or just up to that point. But there is no embroidery or cording or anything down underneath here. Um, I will probably make little... Marks here. We'll do the embroidery part in here. All right, we're working on the very last of the cording. I ended up not doing just the solid line against the back, um, but doing it kind of spaced out like I did in the very front on the bottom. Um, like every, uh, I think, half an inch, there's um, 
go be a corgi line. And I did it for this piece and this piece. This middle piece I'm going to leave blank just because it's so tiny. And this top piece is, you know, doesn't have anything either. So it'll go with these two. So it's these two and these two will go together. So I think that'll look all right. You guys have it marked on the back. And again, we're just going to do a tiny little running stitch. All the way up to that line where the um, boning is going to be. Put it back through, and I'm just making another one to make that little case. And again, before I put in the cording or the boning, I'm going to let this set in some water for a while to try to get these lovely blue chalk marks off. And then I think the very next step is going to be flossing the edges of the gussets since we didn't finish them. Alright, so here we are, all freshly washed. There's still a little bit of blue, especially on the back side, but um, it'll come off with age, and I think we'll, we'll live through it for right now. I'm going to go ahead and attach some boning and some cording. So I'm going to go through one layer. Okay. Where do I want it to stop? Pull the needle back through. I'm thinking a two layer. Probably a good thing for this cording. I'm going to pull that, kind of push the fibers back together so it's not falling out. Do the same thing on this side. And there's one bit of cording in there. Alright, so I'm going to keep doing that. As far as boning goes, in the very center back, I have some steel bones. I have little dips on them now. And then I have some German plastic whalebone for the rest of it. And so I will just be cutting this link, filing it down, and sticking it to all the little boning places. Alright, so we're going to put in some grommets um, for the corset. Um, I'm going to do a spiral lacing, and so basically I mark these every quarter, oh, I mark these every um, inch and a quarter. And the top ones match up, but then this one's a little bit, this one's off-center. And so technically when you put the grommets together, they'll, the other side will meet here and here and here and here. So they're kind of offset um, for a spiral lacing. I consider it a fan lacing, um, which was also popular in the 1830s, but um, I think I'll save that for next time. So we're going to do this one, and I'm using metal grommets today, uh, which are period appropriate. I believe they used, were patented in 1828 somewhere in that general time period. So uh, the original that we're copying from the Victorian Albert Museum, it uses metal grommets. So we were okay. And I'm going to take my awl and poke it in the middle here, take off my pin. And I kind of need a bigger awl for this, but I'm just going to really push and pull to make this hole pretty big. And stick the grommet in there. And then I'm going to use my awl to kind of pull it back. And I'm not breaking the threads because I don't, you know, I don't want to break them. That, you know, weakens them. I just want to pull them apart. Sometimes it works better than others. Okay. And these are grommets, so we have a second piece here. And then I have my setter, which just basically sits just like this. Put this on top. And that's what it looks like on the back, and then we have it at the front. And we get to do that all the way down, over and over and over again. And the lighting's a little weird because I'm outside, because this is the only place with concrete, because I didn't want to damage my floors hammering into them. But then after that, they don't match up. They're kind of diagonally, set diagonally from the others. So, yeah. I mean, can continue working on this. 
So now that we can have all of that put in, I started doing a little bit of embroidery just to kind of see what I wanted, and we'll go over that in just a little bit. But I think I'm ready to go ahead and bind um, the armholes and then the neckline. I think I'm going to wait to bind the bottom as of right now. So I did stitch, uh, did a back stitch to um, make this attached. And I was going to do eyelets and just um, tie them together um, as I've seen in that some originals, but the V&A one is definitely sewn together and I kind of like that better. So I went with that. And then I have lots and lots and lots of bias and I am going to just stitch it together. And I think from the shoulder strap over, I'm going to um, add a little piece of silk ribbon probably to kind of snug it up over the uh, bust line. Alright, so I got nearly half of it embroidered and such, so this is what it's looking like. Um, there's flossing at the bottom and top of every bone. Um, embroidery inside here. I um, I finished the edge of all the gussets, which is a buttonhole stitch, and then did some embroidery in here, and then here, and there's some more embroidery here. I haven't gotten this part done. So what I'm basically doing for the embroidery is just it's just a simple feather stitch. And so essentially, how I've been doing this, it's going up here. And you can work back. So I'm trying to not pick up both layers. So you see it from the back. I'm trying to pretend that I'm doing this prior to attaching both layers. And you go to one side. It's kind of like making a chain stitch, but it's open ended. And now I'm going to the other side and do the same thing. And go back here. Going from you know side to side. Always ending in the middle. And as far as the boning, you can find a bone somewhere here. This one will work. Make sure making sure it's all the way up there. And I have pre-drilled holes into the top and bottom of all my bones. You can see the hole. This one's going to be difficult to do because it's in the middle. But I'm going up in the hole. I'm just kind of going back down. I'm kind of doing like a, like really a satin stitch, but I'm always going back to the center hole and kind of going all the way across. I'm just going to hold my bones in place. I'm trying to make sure I also catch the bottom one too, since the bottom one isn't finished either. I hate to leave one undone. I'm kind of gradually getting, oh, here comes the cat. I'm kind of gradually getting longer. Hello. And here's Elara to say hi. And I'm trying to gradually get longer towards the bottom. And I'm going all the way until um, my seam starts. Make sure it's going to stay. And that looks good. And I'll just tie it off in the back. There was one more step that I forgot about, which is binding, of course, the bottom. So I'm very nearly done. So I'm just going to finish up doing little whip stitches to kind of finish it. I did not do the very center front here just because I wanted space to be able to put 
the uh, buskin. So I stitched the top part to the front pocket and I just didn't do anything to the back pocket yet. And I can just stitch this on once the busk is in and then it's just like a few stitches to take out if I ever want to wash the corset. Alright, let's go ahead and lace it. Here's the back. I didn't feel like buying any more lacing for a while, so I bought like 30 yards. We'll start from here. And here comes the cat. They actually use holes to do something like. I could probably put a bodkin in this, but. I'm going to use a giant needle as a bodkin today. Right, that should be about right as far as how far apart it's going to be. Maybe it'll be a little bit further apart. And I need this to be able to wrap around my waist once at least and then have to tie a bow. So maybe give it a few more inches. I can always put it back down if it's too, if it's not long enough. Alright, bus came in. I went ahead and did a little bit of um, burning on it, which turned out really cute. I found out I'm not very good at um, curved lines, but I did the wheat really well. <laughs> that turned out. Um, so yeah, I think carving was a lot Carving was a lot more popular than burning, but I did find one or two originals that were burned, so I went ahead and burned it. So I'm just going to stick it up, so here's my little hole for the uh, busk. I'm going to put the um, carved side up, that way maybe you'll see it through the one layer of the fashion fabric. Maybe. Yeah, you kind of can. That's cute. I don't know if you really can on video, but you can kind of see it through. It looks a lot better when the uh, fabric is softening the picture. And these will be stitches that will just come out if I ever need to wash the corset or need to take the busk out. Very well, we have a completed corset. We can go ahead and try it on to see what it looks like. Here's the finished corset. So, um, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. It's very pretty. I love the embroidery. It, it the cording works really well. Um, it's definitely not very fitted. It's loose, which isn't a, like isn't a bad thing. It's just not as structured as I'm used to feeling in a corset. But yeah, I'm very happy that I made the decision to go up half an inch with the cups. That turned out really well. Um, busk fits really well in there. I wasn't really sure how to tie it. I don't like the spiral lacy method. So I have spiral laced right now. And I don't like it. So I don't know what I need to do with that. If I need to just do what I normally do with the bunny ears, which I don't think is period correct for the 1830s. Um, I just didn't, it took me forever to get into this corset because it was spiral waist. And I don't want to do that all the time. And it was just, it was just a pain to have to do. So I don't know if maybe there's another method that's better. And of course tying it off was really weird too because there's only like one string at the very bottom. So it's kind of just loosely tied off right now. I don't know if it would stay for very long, but yeah. Um, definitely feel the boning in the back, so it's really nice, very supportive, but um, very loose up front, which is kind of a weird feeling. So um, I guess I can get used to that. I will say I do like that I sewed these in instead of just having them tie on. Um, that works, works a lot better than the mock-up. So good on adding that. Um, there's a little bit of rippling up in here, like right over this front where um, the cups end right around the busk, but that may be a, I don't have a big enough, a long enough busk issue. That could be that. Um, other than that, I think the project turned out really well. The embroidery is really pretty. I'll get a little closer. Maybe down a little bit. So it's a very pretty corset. Compared 
vertically. So um, overall, I'm very happy with it. Um, it works, it functions, and we can now start working on dresses. Now that we have all the pieces together, um, petticoats were already done before I started the channel, so I don't get to do petticoats. Um, but uh, we, I think we've done everything else together, so yeah, I'm excited. Um, next step, I just got to make a mock-up now for a dress, and then we can actually start working on dresses. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next video.